What up B's and G's? I'm back, baby. As you guys know from some of my previous videos, I'm all about upgrading things. I upgraded my desktop CNC so I could cut aluminum. I upgraded my ripstick so I could absolutely shred up hills. I'm constantly upgrading my workshop. But now that I moved across the country and moved into a new place, I'm trying to upgrade my crib. So I started off with some simple things like upgrading the K-Cup coffee pot experience with a 3D printed automatic pot dispenser. It's kind of sick. Tried upgrading my fiance's organizational skills with some 3D printed hooks, her purses. You know, but sometimes there's only so much you can do. So I gave up on that pretty quickly and set my sights on something bigger and better. Upgrading my living room TV experience. See, I got this cool triple window nook thingy in my living room, and it's great because it lets in all this natural light. But as we started furnishing the place, it also became evident that it's really the only good spot for our TV. Problem is, the TV blocks half the natural light coming through those windows. When I wake up, I'm trying to be doused in natural light. The TV just wasn't letting that happen, so it had to go. But not only do I have a triple nook window thingy, my triple nook window thingy has a recessed ceiling cavity, and it's just perfect for zwoop, zwoop. So I just had to do it. I had to build a motorized fold-down TV that comes out of the ceiling. We're gonna make it happen. As any good engineering project, we gotta start off with our basic design goals. Design goal number one is always simple, sleek, and sexy. All right, Alice. So in this case, that means low profile, no wire showing. I want people to look at the front and be like, holy cow, how does that work? And look at the back and be like, damn, that's it? We're trying to drill as few holes as possible in the ceiling because this is a rental and my landlord would probably appreciate that. We're trying to have this thing come down in less than 30 seconds. We're going to need a wireless remote to control this, but also on TV controls in case people can't find their remote. And finally, this one's going to be tough, but we gotta stay under 300 bucks because you can find this on Amazon for less than that. All right, B's and G's, so with that in mind, let's get to it. So plan is, we gotta install this thing upstairs in the living room, right? But my fiance is like, how do you know this thing's not gonna fall out of the ceiling? And I was like, well, because I'm gonna test it. Duh. I don't really wanna have to go up and down with all my tools and stuff. So I'm actually gonna install this thing down here temporarily so we can do some load testing, some weight testing, you know, make sure everything looks good. Then once it works here, we'll take it upstairs. My landlord probably wouldn't be so happy about this, but I think, we're just gonna send it.
I'll give it the tug test. Seems pretty strong to me. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. So I bought these high torque continuous rotation servos on Amazon to build my winch. They claim to be able to have 25 kilogram centimeters of torque. So I doubled them up around a 3D printed winch spool. This setup should give me over 100 pounds of lifting power at one centimeter radius. We'll see about that. Then I used some aluminum plate to mount the servos to the extrusions. And I used a Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller called an ESP32 to process a few button inputs and control the servos over PWM. I ran separate USB and servo power up to the pivot point and down to a bench power supply. Then I found my TV center of gravity point and mounted a PVC pipe to the extrusions at that representative height so I could use this as a test setup to install different weights to simulate the TV for testing. Prepare yourself for the first test. There you have it, 100 pounds of lifting force failing to lift 20 pounds. Tragically, we stalled. This thing is just not gonna cut it. It is not powerful enough. And the ridiculous thing is, we were only pulling at six volts, we were pulling less than an amp, which was like three to four watts. That's less than a light bulb. And a light bulb doesn't even do anything. We're gonna need bigger motors. Luckily, after some browsing on Amazon, I found something I had never seen before. A motor designed for rotating table door lock curtain machines. Are you kidding me? Whatever it's for, we don't care. What we care about is this thing can pump out 70 kilogram centimeters of torque, and it's only one and a half inches tall, aka low profile. So I went back to the Cadmobile and swapped a 6 watt winch system to a 30 watt winch system. Main difference here is that we have to use two relays to switch the motor polarity and reverse power. Here we go. Up, down. Let's crank, boys. Just got some limit switches installed. Check this out. Clickety. Black.
this thing's working, it's time to put the real TV on this thing. But before we do that, a quick plug for my new sponsor. That's right, boys. I'm in the big leagues now. If you're a maker and you haven't heard of these guys yet, let me enlighten you. PCBWay. These guys are your one-stop shop for all of your project's manufacturing needs. You need PCBs? They got it. You need 3D prints? They got it. If you have a 3D printer already, but you're tired of having your 3D prints break like I was, these guys will CNC it for you in aluminum, titanium, whatever your vibe is. Just upload your design, get an instant quote, and you'll have parts two weeks later. All right, time to take this project up a level to the living room. it's time for WDMFT. What does my fiance think? Mm. We love a clean cord look. We love a clean cord look. We do. Wire management. We do. Eric's MO. I like how it's all hidden under this thing. Right? Yeah. Honestly, it's so nice that we might not even lose our security deposit over it. <laughs> Like, if we leave this here, it's an asset to the That's asset. what I was saying. Let's yeah. hope so. Yeah. On the back of the TV is our ESP32 mic controller, which has built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So one option is to use a phone and write a phone app that talks to the ESP32 over Bluetooth to make you up and down. There's some tutorials on how to do this, but it's kind of impractical because if anyone else wants to use this TV, they have to have the app. Next option is we can use another ESP32 with a, something like a portable power bank. There's a protocol called ESP Now, which is a really easy way to communicate between two ESP32s. And this doesn't require using your home Wi-Fi network. The third option is to use your existing TV remote in conjunction with an IR receiver that you hook up to the ESP32. If you have a smart TV with a remote like this, you can repurpose those buttons to move the TV up and down. Or if you don't have a smart TV with extra buttons, you can also buy one of these cheap IR remotes off Amazon. So first I tried using the existing TV remote since it's nice to not have to build a second remote. But after a few days of struggling with the software, I couldn't get the ESP32 on the TV to reliably pick up the button presses. So I went with plan B and built my own remote. So in the end, I managed to meet pretty much all my design goals. The TV comes down in less than 30 seconds. You guys can be the judge, but if you ask me, the design is pretty simple, sleek, and very sexy. I even managed to stay under my budget of $300. The only design goal I probably can't take the W on is keeping my landlord happy by drilling as few holes in the ceiling as possible. If you guys want to build this yourselves, I'm going to leave in the description links to all of the parts, 3D prints, and even the code. If you guys want something like this but don't really feel like building it on your own, I'm also going to leave you a link to one you can buy. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please let me know by pounding that subscribe button or dropping a like or a comment. See you guys in the next one.